957 got leaked. 957 got leaked. I gotta do the video right now. I gotta do it right now. Okay. I gotta set this camera up. We get 957 is out. And it came out earlier than we expected. And it's got a lot of stuff in it. So I gotta hit it off. Alright guys, Lord Nolan here, and we just got information dumped from a leak. Like, legit information dumped from a leak. So this video is going to be a little bit unorthodox, because the way the chapter came out was kind of crazy. But at the same time, the amount of information that we get from this chapter is ridiculous. Like, okay, first off, first big thing I think... Rocks, Blackbeard's father. One. Two thing I think, Sengoku and Sakazuki, aka Akainu, are definitely both members of S.W.O.R.D. Because the way that Akainu talks to Sakazuki, I mean, the way that Akainu talks to Sengoku, it's like they already know all the same information, but G Sengoku is not like an active member of the Marines anymore. And so it's like, Akainu's not even, he's not even worried that he's telling all these Marines all this stuff. He's not even worried about how he's telling it to them, how much information exactly he's letting go. But then at the same time, Akainu was almost like he was listening outside. He knew exactly when to bust in and talk about Wano. And it's like, they're playing like this theater for all the young Marines so that they can have this information spread throughout the Marine uh you know, throughout all the Marines. And then, like, they'll be able to make up their own minds on what it means to uh, do their duty. It's like, it's not it's not about what the world government has told us. It's not about what the Tenryubitu have told us. It's about what's real. And the reality is, we, we have been fighting these two Yonko in different forms for a good number of years now and they've always been stronger than us like they they were stronger than us when they were young and they got stronger so you have to know their history in order for us to even combat them and we can't even combat them right now because we're too weak that's pretty much what they're saying like we can't even fight them because we don't have a, an ally that is a major pirate because we just got rid of the Shibakai. Like, we just literally got rid of the Seven Warlords. Like, and even with them, it would have been hard to take on two Yonkos, the likes of Big Mom and Kaido. And the fact that there was even a Yonko class lets you know how hard Rocks went. Because there were no Yonko before Rocks. Rocks created the entire Yonko position. Like, just, just knowing that in and of itself is a big enough deal for any Marine. And they didn't even know it. They just knew that these people were a big deal. They were emperors of the sea and all that. They didn't know how they became that. They didn't know how uh, Garp fought against them. They didn't know that he worked with Roger. Another big thing, Garp worked with Roger to defeat Rox. So that's okay. Three Will of D members in the same fight. Rox D. Zebek, Gold D. Roger, Monkey D. Garp. All three of them having their different form of freedom tested in the same fight. And not only that, even Sengoku said Rox was Roger's first and most fierce rival, meaning that Rox is legitimately probably one of the strongest people in the world in the old era. He had, his crew consisted of Big Mom, Kaido, Whitebeard, Shiki, the Golden Lion, a guy called Silver Axe, I don't know who that is, uh, somebody uh, named Wang Ji, and I think there was one more person, and I, I don't remember that name, but or maybe there wasn't another person. Maybe it was just the six. But that's six strong as... Like, these guys are ridiculous. Shiki is the only person, apparently, besides somebody else. Like, there's like one more person. That, to escape Impel Down, and he did it alone. 
before Luffy emptied the prison. Big Mom is self-explanatory. 85 children, one of the strongest Yonko, and the strongest pirate crew in the world as of now. The uh, Kaido and his beast pirates, before he had the beast pirates, Kairo, Kaido was still a extremely powerful, extremely strong person that no one, even because I'm sure that all of his exploits where he got captured and they tried to execute him all that stuff like that happened while he was in rocks. So even when he was making mistakes as a drunken, bumbling buffoon, he was still unbeatable. He couldn't be killed and he escaped almost every single time I am relatively certain. The world's strongest man, Whitebeard, is it? We all saw Marine Ford. We don't need to explain the accolades this man has. I don't know about this silver axe, so I can't say. And I don't know about Wang Chi, so I can't say. But Perry Wang Chi was a, a legit Chinese pirate in the 16th century somewhere around there uh and then you got rocks the legitimate most fierce rival of goldie roger now if that doesn't parallel blackbeard and luffy enough blackbeard looks when he smiles exactly like rocks rocks and blackbeard both had the collars up and they both have the same smile, and they both have the almost the exact same hair, and they are both, like, ridiculously powerful, residing on the same island as Rocks, a.k.a. Blackbeard's inheritance. Now, freaking Luffy was even acknowledged by Whitebeard to be the person that Roger was waiting for. King of the Pirates, Roger. Because Blackbeard is not who Roger was waiting for. Blackbeard is the person that is inheriting, or not inheriting, has inherited the will of his own father, Rox. And People are going to be like, oh, they don't have the same last name, blah, blah, blah. Ace didn't have his dad's last name either. But he was still Gold Roger's son. That don't mean, you know, the last name doesn't mean anything. Like the the uh, Marshall could be uh, Rox's girlfriend, baby mama, whatever his last name. And Blackbeard just took it. So the, the last names, because Port Goss is not Gold. So, like the last name, the only person that carried on the last name is Luffy, which is with Monkey. And also, another thing, this is a random side one that wasn't in the chapter. I believe that Dragon has Gold D. Roger's devil fruit. And I believe Gold Roger had the devil fruit to control the weather. Which is why when Shiki attacked him with that pirate alliance, the entire ocean destroyed Shiki's alliance. I believe Dragon inherited Gold Roger's devil fruit when he died. He was in the town when Gold Roger died. He is the son of Gold Roger's, I think, like, strongest ally, even though he was a marine. I feel like Garp was Gold Roger's strongest ally. He entrusted his son to him, okay? And then Monkey D. Luffy, the son of Dragon, inherited Roger's will and, and the Straw Hat. So the Monkey Clan, because the, the Gold and or Porkos, you know, Gold Roger's D Clan, uh, they were destroyed. So they needed somebody to take on Roger's uh, Roger's views of the world, how the world should be. He needed someone to take on Roger's uh, sense of what freedom is. Because 
Luffy don't care about how the world at large is. He's not that hero. But Dragon does. So because Gold Roger was such a large figure, he had two separate wills. The first one is from his first voyage. That's the one that Luffy got, the one that Rayleigh saw in him, the one that Whitebeard saw in him. That sense of, I want to be free. Luffy got that. The, the last voyage, when they find out everything about the world, when they find out everything about, like, the, the hundred, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the void century, they find out about the ancient weapons and the mass, what, all that stuff, and all the world has to offer and all that, that is what Dragon inherited. Dragon inherited the final voyage. He was there when he died. He was there at the same town when Gold D. Roger died. And as a witness to the final days of Gold Roger, he inherited that part. The part that needed to change the world. The part that saw something in the world that wasn't what it should be. And then Luffy, he only knows about Roger's exploits as a pirate. He doesn't necessarily know about all this. And he knows about the One Piece, the grandiose, like the final treasure of the Gold Roger era. And he is there for that freedom. He wants to be the freest man on the sea. That's why both of Gar Garp's, uh, Garp's son and Garp's uh, grandson, that's why both of them inherited a different will. Ace didn't have Roger's will. Ace's will has always been the backup will. It's been the will of, you can't do that to the people I care about because not that many people care about me. They believe I'm the child of a demon. He is the spawn of the lies of the world government. He is the, the reaction that the world had to Gold Roger. He's what, he's what you, you put onto a person when you find out that their, their bloodline is considered to be evil. The world treated him like a demon child, and because of that, he acted out. But then when people started showing him that he could be loved, he needed to defend them with everything that he had in him, which is why Akainu could, ha could put his fist through him in order to defend Luffy and to defend Whitebeard's name. They, they were the people that loved him the most in this world. And anyone talking down on them or trying to hurt them, he would defend them with his life. The same thing with his old crew, the Spade Pirates. It's like, yeah, like, we may be a motley crew, but like, let them go. Take me if you have to. If you have to kill someone, take me. Don't worry about my crew. Because his crew believed in him. And so, with all that, now we get into Wano connection the the Wano connection is through Odin and the Poneglyphs and the language that was written on the Poneglyphs by the artisans that only came from Wano this, the, this beautiful country corrupted by the Rocks Pirates influence in which another member of the D-Clan inheritor of Roger's will to be free is come to free that's the connection between Wano and the Rocks Pirates the Rocks Pirates are there to uproot the world and mold it in their own image for their own freedom their own self uh, self uh, importance their own selfishness the, the member of the D-Clan that wants to be free through sheer force of will and power. Now, the other members of the D-Clan, they want to be free, but they also want everyone to be free. And if they don't want everyone to be free, they want to be free to be themselves without bothering anyone else. They want to be free without having to deal with the, the rest of the world's issues. They don't, they're not there to take the world over. They're just there to live in the world as free people. 
But in any of those cases, all of it is against the Tenere B2's, uh, you know, suppression of freedom around the world. Now, last piece. I believe God Valley is Rafto. And I will tell you why. I will tell you why. When you see the picture of Rafto, right? You see that picture. If you were to take the picture that's straight down, rotate it to where it's a, a vertical line with the left side of that picture being the bottom, the right side being the top. And then you look at it from the ocean towards that left side facing out towards you. That outline of God Valley would look like Rafto. It, that outline, or maybe not Rafto, but the, the ancient kingdom. God Valley would look like the ancient kingdom. And I believe that Roger, having fought rocks on God Valley, along with Garp, is pointing the world to the ancient kingdom. And in pointing the world to the ancient kingdom, he is unlocking the knowledge that the world government has suppressed for so many years. He is opening the, the lockbox of the world government by pointing every free-thinking individual and or greedy pirate towards this one goal and the powerful people of the world know that once that treasure is reached and the, the, the lies and corruption and the history of the world is uncovered the world will be forever changed that is the will of Roger that is the one piece. The one piece is the, the collective knowledge of everything that the world is. The treasure that is the, everything the world has to offer is knowing everything about the world. Now, that being said, that's a lot to cover in one video. And because of that, I'm going to end it here. But I'm probably going to have several videos going more in depth on this chapter because in this chapter we get rocked with information. Pun intended. Now, I'm not even going to talk about the raffle right now because there's so much stuff on my mind I can't even think about the raffle. Y'all already know. If y'all seen any other videos, if you haven't, just go back one or two videos and you'll see it. You'll get that information. These videos are about this chapter because it hits. It, it hits. So I, I, got a lot of, I got a lot of things I got to get out. Lord knows now. Yeah.